Friday morning to you. Uh, it is March 12, and we are in the book of Philippians and chapter 4 this morning. And as we think about this letter that Paul is writing to the church at Philippi, uh, let's be mindful uh, in much the same way as a parent would communicate to a child, uh, I love you, therefore I'm writing to you out of deep concern because I want to help you live right. Uh, that's kind of the, the nature of this uh, book of Philippians. It's a letter, a personal letter, uh, very intimate to them, but it's also an instruction manual. And so when you combine that together, you understand uh, how much a parent would love for a child to grow and, and live accordingly. Uh, that's Paul's heartbeat in this letter. And in chapter four, he's concluding uh, the letter that he's writing, and he's giving some uh, summaries of what he had said earlier, but also some points of uh, instruction. And this particular little passage today, verses uh, 4, 5, and 6, uh, actually verse uh, 7 as well, uh, he's telling us multiple things, uh, but they're all tied together with going through trials, difficulties, hard times. How do we handle them? And he begins in verse four by saying, we start with rejoicing. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. Verse six, be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. So let's just go back to verse four. Uh, you know, the, the rejoicing is a command. Uh, life is full of struggles and difficulties, but we rejoice in the Lord. It's not in the trials, not in the problems, but in the Lord in the midst of trials. Because why? God is sovereign. He knows your struggle. He knows what you're going through. He is there with you. And ultimately, we understand in his providence, he is allowing you to go through that. And so there is a reason or purpose behind it. Uh, don't miss that because of all the heartaches and struggles and difficulties we go through, God is allowing that to refine us. Uh, remember through the Gospels, uh, the, the, the illustrations of how the uh, refiner would heat and burn the precious metals to get rid of the impurities so that you had a pure gold product in the end. And God is at work in us, Romans 8.28, for all things work together for good to those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. And then if you read verse 29 and 30 in Romans 8, it talks about that we would be conformed to the image of Christ. Uh, in the next couple weeks, we're going to be talking about that on our Sunday mornings. But it also goes with Philippians chapter 1, uh, where uh, Paul says that he who has begun a good work in you will continue to perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Uh, that sanctifying, purifying process that we go through in life is so that when we uh, live the Christian life, go through the trials of life, we can rejoice in the Lord being conformed to his image. And then he says, let your moderation or your gentleness be known to all men. How do you live in these trials or difficult times is a testimony to other people. Uh, your friends, your family, your co-workers, your church friends, uh, uh, your neighbors, they're watching and they see your countenance, they hear your words. And so uh, Paul is encouraging the church at Philippi, let your moderation, your gentleness be known to all men. And then here's the solution, be anxious for nothing. Don't let anxiety overcome you for any reason. And uh, life is full of a lot of reasons to let anxiety rule and reign in our lives, but he's telling us, don't let that happen. Be anxious in nothing, but here's how we get over that. Prayer, supplication, with thanksgiving. Uh, prayer is the gentle, generic word. It's uh, talking to God. The supplication is the request side of our prayer life. And so, you know, uh, we sing the psalm, 
uh, from the Old Testament, enter into his gates with thanksgiving, into his courts with praise. Uh, you know, prayer is that adoration of God. It's thanksgiving and worship. But the other side of that, and like Jesus in the Gospels, uh, over and over again taught us, request, bring your request to God. That's the supplication part. Uh, God wants to hear our heart of what our needs and our wants are. And so prayer, supplication with thanksgiving. And that thanksgiving ties together back with the rejoicing, uh, knowing that life can be hard, life can be difficult, and yet it could be worse. Uh, it can always be more difficult, something more tragic could happen. Something else different could be what breaks our heart or uh, causes damage in our lives. And so we give God thanks knowing that he's working together uh, all things for good. He is Philippians 1, 6. He's completing what he started in our life. And we know that he is in control. And we know that things could be a little bit worse. And so we do give God thanks uh, knowing all of those aspects are a part of that. And what is the outcome of prayer supplication with thanksgiving? He says in verse 6, and the peace of God which passes all understanding will guard your heart. Uh, that word guard is, is to protect it and it, it, it actually is a military term that Paul is using. And so uh, many of you today, I know this year has been a, a tragic year for many families and the the heartache and the difficulty and the stress of what you're going through and the isolation, the anxieties have been overwhelming. And yet God uh, in all of that is sovereign and he wants you to learn his ways and learn his heart so that you will be the kind of person that he wants you to be. And he says, if you will pray and supplicate and give thanksgiving, I will give you a peace that is beyond understanding. It's, it's incomprehensible. It will guard your heart today to encourage, strengthen, and really give peace to you in a very unusual way. And then he says, uh, with that is the joy of the Lord. And so uh, rounding out our week, looking forward to Sunday, a brand new sermon series this week. I, if you're watching on the internet, tune in at 10 o'clock. Uh, you can always watch it anytime during the week, of course. Uh, or if you'll be here in person Sunday morning at 10 o'clock, uh, but a brand new sermon series called Saved. And it's the idea of understanding salvation and knowing that I'm truly saved. And so uh, let me encourage you to tune in and be a part of that so that we can uh, not only educate you in the understanding of the doctrine of soteriology, salvation, uh, but give you confidence in your salvation to be who God wants you to be. God bless you. Have a great Friday. We look forward to seeing you on Sunday.